This huge machine in this plant is not a factory machine, but it produces something. It converts kinetic energy to electrical energy. Indeed, we see here an electric generator producing three-phase voltage. But before we go into detail about how this machine works, let's explain the physical principles by which all of these generators work. Three-phase generators are based on the functional principle of electromagnetic induction. Therefore, at this point, we will make an excursion into the world of physics. In this experiment, you see a freely movable conductor bar within a homogeneous magnetic field. As long as this conductor rod is moving, the measuring device registers a voltage. The sign of this induced voltage depends, as you see, on the direction of movement. To explain this effect, the reason for this induced voltage is the so-called Lorentz force, which acts on the electrons of the conductor bar. The resulting direction of movement of the electrons can be determined by the left-hand rule. So far, we have only moved the conductor bar perpendicular to the magnetic field lines. Now we move the ladder stick up and down. No voltage is induced if the conductor bar is moved parallel to the magnetic field lines. Or, in other words, the conductor bar does not intersect the magnetic field lines. As you have seen, electromagnetic induction occurs whenever a magnetic field and an electric conductor move relative to one another. Therefore, to get to an alternating voltage, there exist two possibilities. The first possibility to get this electromagnetic induction is that a wire rotates within a magnetic field. By the way, the higher the rotational speed of the wire, the higher the voltage and the frequency produced. Or the second possibility, the magnetic field rotates respectively to the wire. Alternators usually work this way. To generate a three-phase voltage, three coils are required, which are offset by 120 degrees from one another. Here, the ends of the coils are connected to a star point. As soon as the magnet rotates inside, an electrical voltage is induced in each of these coils. A 360-degree rotation of this magnet corresponds to a complete period time of the induced voltage, as you can see in the line diagram. The small dynamo of your bicycle, which, by the way, generates a single phase alternating voltage, has a permanent magnet as a rotor. For a small power output and size, this type of rotor is the right choice. But for large three phase generators in the industrial sector, we're talking about several megawatts of power, and they have rotors that are electromagnetically excited. This rotor, as shown here, is called salient pole rotor. This rotor consists of several poles, up to more than 20. To get a better idea of the operation, let's consider a rotor with just four poles and watch how it works. The rotor coils are excited with a DC power source and build a magnetic rotor field, as shown. As soon as the rotor rotates, its rotating electromagnetic field, or in short EMF, intersects the Sator winding, and an alternating voltage is induced in the Sator winding. To get a three-phase voltage, our Sator must have three coils shifted by 120 degrees. Generally, its ends are connected together to a star point. What you see in slow motion is that in this four-pole system, this EMF completes a 360-degree cycle when the rotor rotates half revolution. Or, in other words, when the rotor completed a full revolution of 360 degrees, you got an induced alternating voltage within the Sator winding of two periods. The relationship between frequency, number of poles, and number of revolutions is shown in the following equation. In our example, the rotor has to turn around 1,800 RPMs to generate a frequency of 60 Hz. For large machines, this means a large centrifugal force combined with high wear and mechanical damage over time. For this reason, salient pole rotors have a number of poles of up to more than 20.
In other words, the rotor can generate a voltage of high frequency despite its low rotational speed. The rotor is supplied with DC power via sliding contacts. There are two possibilities to get this DC voltage, either from an external DC power source or via a DC voltage generator, which rotates along with the common shaft, as you see here. Therefore, our generator can be classified as self-excited. The question of how the rotor can be driven is still unresolved. In our plant, the rotor is driven by steam turbines. Our possibilities are, for example, wind or water. We hope you liked our video. More information about electricity is available on our webpage. If you want to be updated about new videos, please subscribe to our channel.